Not too long ago, the country and the region experienced uh, the worst drought in 40 years, which is why uh, climate uh, early warning systems are very important. There is a center that is right here, uh, headquartered here, but serving the region, established and founded in 1989. It is the IGAD Climate Prediction and Application Center. So today we're going to be speaking here on Partook about the work of this center, its importance in disaster preparedness for governments and heads of state. And we're here with the regional program manager in charge of disaster risk management at the IGAD Climate Prediction and Application Center, Dr. Ahmed Amdihoun. Thank you so much for making time for us on Power Talk. Thank you. Um, I'd like to first get an understanding of, of this center. Um, what do you do uh, at the Climate Prediction and Application Center for IGAD? Thank you very much, Yvonne. Uh, the IGAD Climate Prediction and Application Center is uh, a specialized institution of IGAD. Uh, IGAD is an intergovernmental body with eight member countries. Uh, it is also a designated, actually, Regional Climate Center, RCC, by the World Meteorological Organization. Uh, the center primarily uh, provides climate services, but also applications such as disaster risk management. Yeah. So um, in all of this time, you've seen quite a bit because from 1989 to date, gathering data and, and making that available to the stakeholders? Exactly, exactly. So when the center started actually started as a drought monitoring center uh -huh. which evolved into um, actually one of the best regional centers in climate services mm -hmm. uh, along this line actually we have uh, developed uh, quite a number of tools including the east african hazard watch which is publicly available for countries um, humanitarian agencies and development partners to access and make decisions uh, based on a near real-time monitoring of uh, major hazards such as droughts and floods yeah beyond real-time monitoring you're also providing early warning systems um, so tell us about what an early warning system entails uh, there's information and data that you generate there what information are you generating what do you do with the information and who do you disseminate it to <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think early warning systems in general are um, early detection and timely dissemination of information, uh, very life-saving information that uh, protects also livelihoods. These are actually very fundamental and uh, often, you know, um, pegged around four key pillars. The first being uh, risk knowledge, understanding exposure, vulnerability, and so on. The second one is the detection part, where ICPAC is actually um, leading as a regional uh, entity, as a regional body. Uh, and the third one is dissemination and communication. Okay, once you generate the information, it has to be uh, reaching uh, the last mile mm -hmm. in as much as possible. That's the most important part. Yeah. And the fourth is actually how you now uh, inform preparedness. Mm -hmm. Preparedness in the region, at country level, at national, subnational, local level. All right. Yeah. So that information now assists with disaster preparedness, right? Exactly. So knowing what's to come, particularly with climactic conditions, yes and then doing something about it. So exactly. um, how has the information from the centre uh, been used before? Perhaps you could um, just give us an example of how disaster preparedness um, you know, is, is, is assisted by the information and the early warning uh, system. Exactly. So uh, as we release you now uh, the real-time monitoring and also forecasting of the, the situation in the region, yeah. in the entire Eastern Africa region, uh, we also work closely with uh, national disaster risk management authorities, for example. Whenever we detect some exceptional um, phenomena, mm -hmm. we relate that information to countries uh, and they are there actually to take actions. The forecast we issued just uh, today yes. uh, is also actually meant to inform the national preparedness plans. So countries will go from here and work on their national preparedness plans. That's exactly the ultimate goal. Not only the plan, the action bits also have to follow. Right. Yeah. And the funds that would be needed. Um, exactly. The financing the is also very, very important. Right. Very, very important. Yeah. And so you talked about the forecast. So, um, you know, we're going into, uh, at least in Kenya, the short rain season. That's October to December of this year. Yeah. Um, so give us the overall forecast um, for the season that is coming. For the Horn of Africa, wider Eastern Africa, and then we can talk about Kenya. Exactly. So, you thank you. Uh, so, what we have just issued is uh, a seasonal forecast for December, uh, October to December season. Um, the forecasts are actually these seasons are, by the way, a very important short trains, particularly for uh, for the regions in the equator. Mm -hmm. So. That includes southern Ethiopia, um, eastern parts of Kenya, parts of Somalia, and so on. Uh, so the forecasts are actually inc indicating that there is an increased chance of drier than usual conditions uh, in the region, which is very important now mm -hmm. uh, to take note. Um, 
in terms of temperature as well, you know, there is um, uh, warmer, the forecast indicates that the warmer, warmer than usual conditions for eastern part of the region again. This actually calls for immediate action uh, as we speak. Um, they, they really call for, for immediate action. But I want to give a context as well, uh, okay. Yvonne. Yes. Um, as we look at this regional forecast, Regional Climate Outlook Forum, uh, we should be very careful not to just depend on this information as we are going to update. Uh, for example, for September, we are going to update this information, uh, October, November. So as the season progresses, we are also providing updating okay. to that one. Okay. Plus, the national governments, especially the national meth departments, yeah. are going to issue as well a seasonal forecast, which are also very important to inform uh, national and local level actions. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the rain patterns because you say we will, um, we should expect lower than um, you know rainfall for for, yes. for the region. Um, let's talk about that even as we look at a map and maybe you can explain to us. Uh, what this is? Yeah. Yes, exactly. So th this map uh, that you see maybe uh, indicates actually. Uh, uh, an increasing likelihood, the one you see in orange, in yellow, um, and so on, are areas actually that are going to receive uh, uh, a decreasing trend of rainfall. Okay. Uh, from this particular forecast, uh -huh. it's a likelihood, it's a probability. Right. Uh, but these areas actually need to be uh, closely monitored uh, as the season evolves. Okay, and these are, um, you know, Kenya, Ethiopia, uh, Southern Somalia? Ethiopia, yeah, Southern and Southeastern Ethiopia, right. uh, Eastern part of Kenya. Uh, much of Somalia and uh, part of also Tanzania, northern and central part of Tanzania. These are areas actually that are um, expected to have um, suppressed rainfall. Suppressed rainfall. Yeah. And so what do you do when, um, but before we get there, I want us to also take a look at the temperature uh, map exactly. because you said it'll be warmer uh, than usual. Um, so you can explain that to us and then we can talk about both of them and the effects that they'd have. So it's, okay, so I imagine the orange is the warmer regions. Uh, the red ones are the warmer regions <laughs> now. The eastern side of the region actually mm -hmm. is uh, forecasted to be warmer than the average condition okay. for those regions. So I think in that area actually we're continually monitoring the situation and also updating um, like in addition to the seasonal one, the monthly forecasts are mm. going to be released. Mm -hmm. The national med departments are also going to release the daily and weekly forecasts. Mm. I think those are very important information uh, to inform our actions particularly. Right. Uh, yes. So it looks like um, these regions will have lower than expected rainfall and uh, higher than usual temperatures. So what does this outlook mean um, for food security, for livestock rearing and development? What are the likely effects of a forecast such as this one? Uh, so I think over the last uh, two days, yesterday and today, I think uh, the member states have been convening from six sectors, yeah. including the ones you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're deliberating actually what could be the possible uh, impacts of uh, this situation yeah. of uh, reduced rainfall in some areas um, and also uh, increasing warmer than uh, average temperatures. So the key, for example, in terms of agriculture, uh, what we're saying is in these areas, I think uh, the preparedness plans need to inform uh, both farming communities for crop, crop uh, growing areas as well as pastoral areas in terms of water and uh, feed availability. Yeah. So they need to take this into consideration when they are planning actually uh, their season. Okay. okay. Yeah. What other sectors could it uh, possibly? Uh, uh, I think the most, uh, the, the six most important uh, sectors that we uh, as ICPAC are working with are number one is a disaster risk management of, uh, uh, sector. Right. Uh, the second one is agriculture and food security. Uh, the third one is water and energy. Uh, the fourth one is conflict. Uh, the fifth one is, uh, by the way, media is also part of it. Um, uh, th those are the main ones actually that right. we're dealing with. Yeah. Because it's what we were talking about a little earlier. This is also a matter of security because when you have reduced resources and communities that have to um, essentially uh, fight or share, um, you know, scarce resources, then this also has a security component attached to it. Definitely. That's, yeah. that's exactly the point. Now, um, you know, whenever there is uh, reduced rainfall, uh, usually water and pasture availability becomes uh, mm -hmm. an issue of contention now. Yeah. So communities usually move uh, yeah. in search of water and pasture. Mm -hmm. That definitely you know, creates conflicts. So that's why actually one sector is dealing with uh, the climate security yes. and uh, uh, peace nexus also. How this is trans, you know, transition, transition, translating into uh, the security issue in the region. Yes, uh, and that's a, an important component uh, to always remember. Now, what's interesting, uh, Dr. Ahmed, yeah. is this information is publicly available, right? Definitely. There is a portal. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Actually, so one, who yeah. has access to this portal and what sort of information do you put out there? Exactly. Now, from this uh, exercise with uh, all member countries, 11 of them, yeah. uh, what, what is really important is 
uh, we're going to generate um, advisories for decision makers. In the coming one, two, three days, I think it's going to come out and uh -huh. it will be publicly available. Okay. In addition, the portal you mentioned, uh, Yvonne, is um, what we call the East African Hazard Watch. Mm -hmm. So that one is basically a multi-hazard platform where um, any interested um, you know, uh, individuals or institutions can go and see uh, the new real-time information there, including our recent forecast, okay. the one we have just shown our audience. Right. Uh, the information are going to be up uh, and running there. Okay. So they can, uh, it's very interactive, you know, they can zoom into your locality, right. see what is the forecast uh, and, and yeah. Yeah, and you say this is information that you update uh, you know, on a more regular basis, exactly. because this is an overall forecast for what happens until the end of the year, but you yes. continue to update that as exactly. well. Exactly, monthly and also as the season progresses, we update this uh, seasonal forecast as well. Okay, yeah. and it's important to state, I think, that, um, you know, tracking, forecasting and monitoring weather patterns is not an exact science. So mm -hmm. it's something, I guess, that you have to keep um, improving, you know, improving exactly. and, and taking exactly. a look at it. Yeah. Um, you know, from uh, the start, uh, you know, I mean, Africa and, and the region has seen quite some serious devastating effects yeah. uh, of drought, mm -hmm. uh, famine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we all remember 1984 um, and uh, this center now being there since 1989. Mm. What are some of the trends that you've seen in terms of um, our preparedness yeah. and our response mechanisms, particularly now that we're having even more information timely uh, that, is, that is being disseminated at the right time. Yeah. How far have we come, Dr. Ahmed? Exactly. I think, thank you very much, Yvonne. I think uh, we have come um, long distances, but really there is uh, uh, an encouraging also progress in terms of forecasting. Mm -hmm. For example, the recent forecasts uh, ICPAC is providing is uh, what we call an objective forecast, uh, which is um, basically providing information which are uh, more accurate, uh, relatively in terms of their skills, they are, you know, better uh, compared to some years back. Yeah. So this information, uh, recently we are talking about how AI and machine learning also improves forecast. Uh, we have a great uh, collaboration with uh, global centers. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is how actually we are trying to improve the forecast. As we do that, uh, the preparedness and the action part also is uh, evolving. For example, the drought of 1984, yeah. we are talking of actually um, some million plus lives perished. How about the recent drought, for example, of uh, five consecutive failed seasons? Yes. I think the number is uh, almost... Yeah. 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 There's no, so that is, uh, I think, the, the transition uh, that we can be proud of as a region mm. uh, coming forward. But there's a lot also to be done okay. in terms so of translating. Is, exactly. Close, yes. Exactly. So that's basically translating uh, early warnings, this information available to early action. That is actually the most important one. And IGAD, in fact, is uh, spearheading uh, the development of, for example, a roadmap for anticipatory actions. Okay. Um, even what anticipatory actions means is basically uh, a predefined thresholds. Okay, when something reaches here, you take action. Okay. Okay, so predefined uh, action. And a predefined uh, thresholds, uh, pre-identified actions, and pre-arranged finance. So a three-pillar approach. Uh, I'm happy also to report that Kenya just launched uh, last week their national uh, anticipatory action roadmap. So that is, I think, uh, what we need to be focusing now. How this readily available information, warning information, mm -hmm. can be translated into early action so that they can la save lives, protect livelihoods, and also uh, reduce the losses and damages due to these extremes. That's right. Thank you so much uh, for this information. Now you have it. We have a, a regional, local um, overview of uh, the weather patterns to expect over uh, the next uh, rainy season, that is to the end of the year. And like Dr. Ahmed Amdihun says, it is early warning that should lead to early action. We've come a long way, but we continue to do more. Kenya having set up its own uh, threshold uh, for action on the same. Thank you very much uh, for the work that you do um, and for enlightening us on uh, what's to come. Uh, and hopefully this is information that we can all use. You can go to that portal. It is the East African Hazard Watch. That's right. And that information is publicly available to anyone and all stakeholders. That's Dr. Ahmed Amdihoun, who is a regional program manager for disaster risk management at the IGAD Climate Prediction and Application Center here on Power Talk tonight. Thanks.